One of the members of our website, Alan, recently posted a picture in the gallery and it was entitled Old and New. The effect looks something like this and I thought what a fantastic idea. So guess what we're going to be doing in this video? Yes, we're going to take a look at recreating this effect, but first of all, let's just delete that group. The image itself was taken at Gloucester Keys during a Tall Ships event, and I thought it would make a really good old and new version. Now, first of all, we need to select the center part, this galley in here. So we're going to come up to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the marquee tool. It's the rectangular marquee tool. And we're going to pick up the new selection as well. I do find this really handy. Coming over to the image, I'm going to look at a line down this part here just above the mast as well. So clicking down, drawing it over like that, that would be pretty good. Now because we got the new selection, that gives you the rectangle with the little flag thing on the top there. You can move this around, you can recompose it if you want to, but that's looking pretty good like that. Now we're going to copy this selection to a new layer. All we need to do is use Command J or Control J. That's Command J, Control J. There it is. We've now copied that selection and it's now on its own layer called Layer 1. We're going to double click. We're going to call this what it's going to be, which is going to be an old photo. Right. To make it into an old photo, we're going to go down to an adjustment layer. The adjustment layer we're going to use is going to be Hue Saturation. Now when we click on this, we're going to go to Colorize. This is in colorizing the entire layer, which is not what we want. But if we go down to this icon here, it looks like a square with a downward facing arrow. Incidentally, on older versions of Photoshop, you may get like a double link type effect. Just click on that. That's now going to clip it. There it is. You can see to the layer underneath that old photo layer. You can see that little bent down arrow there showing it's clipped to this layer here. Right click. We're going to come to the hue slider. I'm going to move this across. I'm going to take it to that area there. Looks pretty good. The saturation, I'm going to drop down to this position here. That looks brilliant like that. The lightness slider, I'm going to make this brighter. We're going to take it to that area there. But we want to make it brighter still. So let's go back to the layers panel. We're going to go back down to an adjustment layer. The adjustment layer this time is going to be levels. Now when levels opens, you can see there's the histogram. If we take a look at the layers panel, you'll notice there's no downward facing arrow. So we need to clip it again to the layer underneath. Let's just double click on that. As soon as we click on it, look at the way the histogram changes. So now we are working on the old photo layer. Right, let's click on this. Let's move it across into that position there. I just want to bring it in line with the start there, the dark point of our histogram. Come into the center slider. If we move it across to the left hand side, that's going to introduce more of the lighter, uh, lighter pixels even. Right, he says, getting teeth, tongue and everything else tangled up. And as we move it across into that area, brilliant. Just the sort of effect I'm after. We've gone from this to that. Right, let's go back over to the layers panel something else I'd like to do. Coming down to the old photo layer, I'm going to right click and we're going to choose convert to smart object. We're doing this for a couple of reasons. The first thing, if I just move my cursor out, I'm going to press H to give me my hand tool. I'm going to press command or control. We're going to zoom in. We're going to give this a little bit more of an effect and the effect we're going to be using is under filter. We're going to go to filter gallery. Now don't forget a smart object is also a smart filter and dry brush. No, we're not going to use that. We're going to use grain. Now with grain, if we just scroll down to this area here, the type of grain we're after is going to be clumped. That looks pretty good. In fact, the settings there look absolutely brilliant. Let's just take a look at the intensity. If we take that up, now let's drop it back down into this area. Right, contrast, taking it up and nope too much contrast there so dropping it down as we start to drop it down into that area no let's take it back up into this position here great stuff really like that we're going to click on OK and look at the difference that makes to the image now don't forget it's a smart object which is now a smart filter that'll give us the option to double click on this we can go back we can make any changes if you want to right let's fold that up out of the way Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a stroke border around the outside of our old photo. 
Coming over to the thumbnail here on our old photo, I'm going to press Command or Control. You can see the way the cursor changes, gets a little square on its back. Clicking down, we have now made a selection around the outside of our image. We're going to go up to the top layer of the layer stack. We're going to put in a new empty layer by clicking on this icon, layer 1. But we're going to double click. We're going to call this what it's going to become, which is a stroke. Let's go over to edit. We're going to go down to stroke and when stroke dialog opens the width 24 pixels. That I think is ideal for this size image but you may need to experiment with the width. The color. No, black's not going to work. Let's change that to white and we're going to go down to the slider here. I'm going to lift this up. We're going to change it from the reds. We're going to go into the yellows. Something like this here would be absolutely perfect. And just click in to move that uh, selection across into this area. You can see it's changing. We've gone from black, which we had originally. We've now got that color there. I'm just going to back it up a little bit, just into a nice bit of cream. Click OK to that. The other important setting is location. Make sure you're using inside. So click on the inside and now click on OK. And there it is. Right, while we're here, we're going to go to Filter. We're going to come to Distort. We're going to go to Ripple. I just want to break this border up, the stroke border, the stroke border even. I told you I was tripping over teeth, tongue and everything else. Let's just move down to this area here. That looks pretty good. Now, I've got Large selected. I've got 57%. That looks absolutely brilliant. You might want to experiment again. Depends on the file size you're working with small you can see taking that up into that area in fact that looks good as well I'm going to use that so we're using small I've taken it up to 336 percent let's click OK brilliant stuff like the way that's working command D control D to deselect we're on the top layer this is highlighted I'm going to come down to the old photo layer I'm going to press and hold down shift holding down shift I'm going to click on the old photo layer they're all now selected. Let's zoom out as well using Command 0, Control 0. Coming up to Edit, we're going to go down to Free Transform, which is Command T, Control T. And if we're going to get a warning that as soon as we start to apply the transform, the uh, Smart Filter is going to turn itself off. It's looking OK for the moment, but we're going to make the picture a little bit bigger. So I'm going to come down to one of the bottom corners. I'm going to press and hold down shift so it maintains all the correct proportions. You notice there the smart filter just turning itself off. So pulling out to that sort of size, that looks pretty good. Just going to move it round slightly, lifting it up, placing it into position like that looks pretty good. Just perhaps over a little bit more and double clicking to apply. There it is, job done. You'll notice the smart filter turning itself back on again. Right, there we are. That has recreated the old photo effect. In the next part of the video, we're going to take a look at applying the hand.